International Players franchise continues as we have Pablo Lopez on the mound. His 2.03 ERA and under one whip. Hopefully it's going to lead us to victory so long as we actually score on offense. We are 7-3. They are 6-4, 10 games through the season. And we face one of the premier center fielders in the league, and he's leading off, I would say surprisingly, but seems to be more of a thing now in Major League Baseball where teams will put one of their best hitters all around, either first or second in the lineup. Behind him is Christian Arroyo, J.P. Crawford, Suarez, Riley, Teoscar Hernandez, Clay Potter, a rookie, Hamel, and Taylor Trammell as well at the bottom of the lineup. Churio playing at second base today. It's a bit of a mishmash of guys all over the field just because guys have got tired through 10 games in the season, so we want to kind of give some guys a break. Suarez is going to strike out to end the first, so we won't have to worry about any offense from this team. We will be focusing offensively on Yon Moncada, 278 average. And I think he has like one or two home runs. Again, very early in the year, the Mariners looking to make the postseason. They haven't done so in a couple of years. Ground ball to first, and unfortunately, Moncada's first plate appearance will be up empty. As we take a look at the, again, mismatch of a lineup, Araya is at short. See Gonzalez in right, both trailer in uh, DH position. Marcano in center, Toribio at first, and Trulio in second. As we look to try to get some backup guys to burn early in the year, Kyle Riley is going to strike out 353 average, though, thus far. Tejasker also hitting over 300. Unfortunately, he's not going to connect on the slurve outside corner. And that is another strikeout for Lopez. Here's Clay Potter, two home runs, seven RBIs through very, very early in the year. I'm not sure when he got drafted, but he looks pretty damn good. Left fielder for this team. The one issue is he doesn't really field all that well. I'm not sure if they're going to stick him with DH more than actually playing him in left, or, I mean, let's be honest, the AI cares more about overalls than anything. And in his first plate appearance against us, he is going to slap this one center to end the second inning. Taylor Trammell, 2-1 count, and he's going to rip this one into right field for a base hit as the Seattle Mariners finally get a runner on early on. Rodriguez, unfortunately, is going to strike out for the second consecutive plate appearance as Lopez is able to gun that fastball right by him. Arroyo is going to chop this one up the middle. Trujillo over toss to Arias for the final out in the third. Right, Yo Moncada getting get another plate appearance. He does have a runner at first, but the issue is there are two outs. And he is going to chop this one back up the middle. Crawford is able to, oh my goodness, great plays. He's able to glove grab it and toss it all in one motion for the final out. Check me out on Twitter or X, whatever the hell they want to call it at State Franchise. And oh my goodness, Taylor Trammell says, hold on, wait a minute, before you click away, look at this home run as it ends up. Oh, man, I think that might have bounced to one of the hot dog stands out there. And Seattle takes the lead. It is either 1-0 or 2-0 if I were just paying attention and not looking at my phone. Probably should pay attention. It's 1-1 apiece, as a matter of fact. Cooper Hermel, liner right at my god, and he's going to make the athletic grab for the final out in the fifth. You can look at that one more time. Yo Mokata, still a high potential player. So he's getting up there in age, about 27. So at some point, you kind of figure he's going to turn the corner. Then again, some guys are late bloomers. One, two count. Rodriguez is going to strike up for the third straight time. And that has been a big time thing in this ballgame, being able to set him down. The first pitch was a sinker. Second was as well near the same area and a fastball in the outside corner. Finishing him off with a cutter. Nothing but fastballs from Lopez. 1-1 ball game, Moncada. 0-2. Oh, 4-2 today, as a matter of fact. And he hits one high, but it ain't too far. Unfortunately, it'll find a glove. And he's got yet another empty plate appearance to Teoscar Hernandez. Suarez, 1-1. Lopez still out there in the seventh. He's going to rip this one. In the left field, into the gap, it's going to clamor up against the wall. McConnell will recover it, fire it back in, and they'll have a, a double with nobody out thus far. Raleigh, Chopper to second base. Troy will go to first, and Suarez will advance. They are 90 feet away from the run. Can we prevent them from taking the lead late in this going? 
Tiasco Hernandez stretching out three, two count. Clay Potter on deck, and uh, you know what? This is not the worst move in the world. I'd almost rather have the double play so we can get out of it, but base hit will score one as Clay Potter will face a shift in the infield as we decide to go double play as opposed to playing them in. First pitch is going to be a sinker on the outside corner for strike number one. Next pitch, high fastball, 0-2, Potter, is he nervous? I mean, I know this is all your 10th professional game, really 11th actually. 1-2, and oh my goodness, circle change on the outside corner, as you know what, if you just played triple A, you wouldn't have had this problem. He'd know that guys at the professional level are going to change speeds, they're going to change locations, they're going to do any and everything possible to get you out. Check swings at a pitch that honestly he could have maybe hit past second. Trio not the best at second base, but he is capable. And Lopez will get out of this out of danger in the tie ball game to the eighth. Trailer gets on with a triple after Gonzalez strikes out. And we'll see it to Cooper and Marcano can drive in the run to give us the lead the late going. 200 average for Marcano. But you know, we like his versatility. He plays damn near everywhere. And honestly, was one of our best clutch players last season. Marcano smacks one up the middle as the defense is playing in, and that will be a run as we take the lead two to one here in the seventh inning. You guys looking a little upset in himself, but honestly, it makes sense. He has not hit today, and that is going to be the end of the line for Logan Gilbert. Seven innings, really almost eight. You know, just did not do, I mean, he did enough to keep the game close. And Moncada going to steal, and he's going to take second easily. Despite the two outs that we have on the board, a little risky. I don't know if I would have done it, but, you know, sometimes players have the green light. Chorio smacks this one to center field. Rodriguez chasing it back, and unfortunately, it's going to be caught before it ends up at the warning track. Moncada gives us the lead, but can we hold on as we change Pitchers. It's either Juancio Contreras or Felipe Bermudez. We go with Bermudez. 5.4 ERA. Righties are hitting 429, but lefties are being shut down at about half that clip. But, you know, he's only pitched three and a third inning, so it's not a really big sample size. Humel smacks this one deep to right field. Gonzalez will catch it as the wind kind of pushes it back in. We're in the eighth inning. Rodriguez, can he get on for the first time today? Rips it right at Moncada. Oh my goodness, quick reflexes, cat like reflexes at that. And this has not been a good game for him, for the superstar. Arroyo blops this to right field. It's going to bounce foul. No. The first base umpire calls it fair. 0 oh, 2 count. And that gunner is not going to matter if JP Crawford stares at a cut fastball. As we get out of the eighth inning, and <laughs> Clay Potter. Understandably disappointed. Can Moncada add on an insurance run? Ooh, swing and a miss at a slider. Devastating pitch from J.P. Sears. He's going to be sat down for the fourth straight plate appearance. Suarez, known for his power. Bermudez looking like he's trying to get the save. And ooh, this ball's going to hit the left center. Marcano going to make the catch. Got to be careful, man. You cannot let a power hitter of his caliber smack one like that. Can't give him something so easy he can just barrel up. Right, Cal Riley coming to the plate. They need him to get on two for eight in the series and he's going to chop this one into the infield grass. No, actually Riley is able to stretch out and make the stab and throw. That is the second out. Riley looking very disappointed in himself. Understandably so. You're the number five hitter. They're expecting you to hit a bit better even if, you know, analytics say you want the better hitters at the top of the lineup. He's kind of in the middle. You know, sometimes teams play both sides. Hernandez, chopper to first base. Is Toribio are going to make it. Stop. And step on the ball to lead it to the victory 2-1 to here at quote-unquote home. Because, again, as I told you, I'm not creating a new – I'm not creating a stadium. I, I, we, need, we need something more – as far as the stadium assets to feel like it is really a stadium, our own stadium as we take on the Brewers. Yeah, I may think I'm not drunk saying this, but Sean Refoley is a international player. I could acquire him if I wanted to. But look at that whip. Damn near three and a half. Uh-uh. Y'all could keep him. 
As a matter of fact, I could have sworn he was a reliever, but doesn't matter at this point. Arias, three years ago, the AL batting champion just beating out Aaron Judge. He's going to smack this one down the left field line, and he is going to easily end up with a double despite not being the speediest. His fifth double of the year in only, like, what, 13 games? Mercado striking out again, and, man, he is just coming up empty, at least in the games that we are seeing. He's batting 250. Juan Soto rips this one into right field. The runner from second going to, they put it third actually. Hit a little too hard for his liking. O'Neal. Oh man, slider high in the zone. As Taylor, Tyler O'Neal strikes out. Look at Mike Soroka, the man on the mound. Our biggest, well, maybe our second biggest free agent pickup, if we're going to be honest about it. it. Depends where your mileage varies. As Soto, it would definitely be one. O'Neal and Soroka are kind of 2A, 2B. Just saw the quick glance at the lineup, and Christian Yelich going to get plunked in the butt cheeks. We'll have, they'll have runners on first. As Willie Adamas batting 529 in the last four games. I mean, very small sample size. And we will lower that just a bit as Torrio will play his more natural outfield position, making the catch. William Contreras, I almost thought this was Wilson. And then I remembered, they're, they're not the same. Um, this Brewers team actually has like four or five former Cardinals on it, not including Contreras. Contreras, formerly a Brave, as we make the final out of the first. And Arias, another rip. What else is new? Hits it in the right field, and the ball's kind of bobbled, so the runner who was at first is going to come around to third. That is Churio. we got runners at the corners. We are up 2-0, and we're going to try to add some more to it. And Moncada, ground ball to first. And, oh, boy. I guess over a larger sample size, he's not bad, but we might need to go in another direction. Cody Pellinger sends his baseball in another direction. Whence it came. Hits it the dead center. Damn, are the Brewers just trying to pick up all the NL Central players? Takes it deep, cuts the lead in half. It is 2-1. Former MVP. He is now six years removed from that, as a matter of fact. But showing that he still has the prowess to hit it. 400 feet in 6 foot 200 frame. Garrett Mitchell batting 296. Nope, we'll just drop that down a bit as he strikes out on a cut fastball. Not without Bellinger giving him a lead first in the second. Not the lead, actually, giving him a run on the board in the second. Arias two for two. Can he make it three for three? He's going to hit this fastball in the left field, and unfortunately, neither extremely fast runner is going to tag up. Mercado will get an opportunity, and he's going to just squander it as he hits it behind the backstop. Come on, you could at least attempt to put that in play, dude, or not swing at it. A little high. Soto, 2-1, and he's going to smack this to left field. Can a fan reach out for it? No, we're not going to end up in that type of situation. We do have the lead 4-1. Double by Alvarez as now they're going to change pitchers. Archie Bradley, run scores thanks to Marcano. Another base run on a three-run shot by Eli De La Cruz and oh man, Aaron Ashby gonna have to come out of the bullpen. Does have a 1.02 ERA, but they may be using him a bit much. He has 17 innings plus pitched, and we're only 13 games in. This is ridiculous. Get the AI bullpen management together, SDS. Arias, you know what? This is almost getting boring. <laughs> Watch another base hit. Soroka gonna give up a double as it's hit down the right field line, and running all the way over the foul line. Colas will toss it back in, but the runner will come around. I believe for first. And yeah, that's not gonna do much to the lead at this point. But hey, you gotta start somewhere. That's his third double. It is now eight to two. Del, Del Santos gonna give up a long ball as it just, just it's right in the pocket between. The foul pole in that wall. It is eight to three. Garrett Mitchell hits one high, hits it deep. Trio at the track at the wall. It is into the home bullpen. They have now cut the lead in half. They're still down by four, and I just wanted to show this. I, 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 I love that slide. I don't really care for the Brewers, but I love that slide. It's always cool. Garrett Mitchell dapping up his boys. 
Oh, yeah, we're going to blow this damn game. Adamas rips right past the second baseman. Arias, I believe, or that's McConnell, one or the other. Doesn't matter. Base hit. Jumping ahead, William Contreras now is facing Hector Ramos. Runner on first. Ramos, just calm down. Do your job. Try to get a double play. I mean, Contreras isn't much of a hitter. He is 0 for 3 today. And slider just, just, just touching the corner, or at least the bottom of the zone, and he is disappointed in himself. Paul Goldschmidt striking out on the fastball. Can't seem to catch up to that heater even at the age of 37 or 38. I forget how old he is. Alvarez, though, having a hell of a game, three for four, and is a triple shy of the cycle, and he's not going to get it, unfortunately. But Bellinger does get another base hit, and a rally has to start somewhere. And Bellinger gets the hit, and Dijon hits this one down the line in the left. Churio, a little slow to the ball, throwing it back in as well. And unfortunately, Bellinger will score from first. It is eight to five with nobody out and in front on second. Garrett Mitchell is going to hit this to left field, and unfortunately for us, that is an out. But if he hit that a little further. Runner from second could have tagged. They could have been 90 feet away. Plus the out. Brian Anderson comes to the plate. 0 for 3. Curveball. Gonna get smoked the right field. Coas can't get it. Runner from second will score. It is 8 to 6. Second place home. Home replaces second. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this not one bit. Are we gonna call on the closer? We are not. Actually, we're gonna trust Ramos to get out of this. Fastball inside. Bryce Tarone. Cannot, it's not going to swing at it, as a matter of fact. He's looking a little gassed here. Fastball outside corner this time. Gets the strike. No double play. I'm not going to say it's not possible. It's just not likely. And to run. Batting 429 with runners in scoring position, but down to 1 2. The first pitch from Ramos. It is a strikeout looking. As Tehran had no opportunity to swing at that. He could have. I mean, he's wearing zero for a reason. He's not, he's not going to do a damn thing in this clutch situation. Christian Yelich is going to come up to the plate. As you can see, he's kind of bounced back somewhat. He's averaged 21 home runs a season since his NL MVP year back in 2019. Get six seasons ago, he was batting 062 at runners in scoring position. And nope, high fastball, going to miss. Yelich showing some patience. 1 2, and curveball. Kind of lost grip of that. 36 pitch from Ramos, and he's going to get fouled off. He would represent the tying run if he can hit another long ball. He's completely capable, and oh man, he's not going to get enough of this 98 mile an hour fastball to center as O'Neill makes the catch. And we take the victory 8 to 6 despite the late third of the game attempted heroics. Check out a legend bowl. Franchise, check out this uh, Franchise Ain't Dead podcast. I will holler at y'all later and have more of this later. Peace out.